Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Alexis, aka Trans Cinderella, and this is Ask a Trans Woman, my weekly series where I take your questions about a specific topic and I answer them from a trans woman's perspective. This week's topic is coming out. Lindsay, what's our first question? How do you come out? <laughs> Figure we get the general one out of the way. So, how do you come out? Well, there's a lot of ways you can come out, um, and there are a lot of ways that you really shouldn't. I know from experience, so let's get that out of the way first. One way to not come out is just, you know, blast post it on Facebook before you've talked to really anybody. Yeah, I don't recommend that. It makes certain members of your family upset, and rightfully so. Um, I made the mistake because I was afraid of his reaction. I made the mistake of not talking to my dad first. I had already spoken with my mom, and I had also kind of made the assumption that she had spoken to him. They didn't know, like, my mom did not know I was going to come out at the time that I did. Um, I initially came out specifically as non-binary, um, but I did so on the eve of former President Trump's election. Uh, basically, after the election was called for Trump, I made the decision that I didn't know how much time I would have to be my full self. And so I came out in a big post on Facebook. My wife at the time knew. Um, she didn't know the coming out was coming, but she would, she had known for several months at that point. Um, we'd had whole conversations about it. We were talking about it in therapy. It was, it was a thing. It's not like I, you know, blindsided her, but my dad was blindsided. And that hurt him. Not that I was coming out. Um, he didn't really care. He's been great, um, other than with the pronouns thing, but he's getting much better. And the, the issue was just that I didn't talk to him beforehand, and it really hurt him. And it's um, actually, it's a lesson that I've tried to take with me as a parent now, because I am trying to make sure that my kids never feel that way, that they have to be embarrassed or that I'm going to be so incredibly disappointed like they are. So that's something that I'm working on. So don't do that. But as far as how you come out, it's entirely personal. Um, the reality is you will be coming, coming out a lot. Um, you know, it could be as simple as you start a Twitter or Instagram or separate Facebook account with a new name to kind of test things out. And you start meeting people that have no idea who you were. So you're not really coming out. You're just meeting someone as your true self. But at some point, you do have to start telling people. And that can be as simple as, um, you know, an in-person conversation. Or if you're not ready for that, a text message. It's kind of eh. But I also know, like, the worst thing in the world is a phone call. So... You know, for some people that you're not able to speak to them face to face, even through, you know, whether it's a Zoom call or FaceTime, whatever, you know, a text message might be the right choice and it might be your only choice or your only option, really. So there's a lot of different ways to have that conversation, but you need to do what feels right to you. That's the most important thing is you doing things on your terms. Um, Something that I really appreciated was the recent That 90s Show, which Netflix, come on, renew that, please. Uh, they tackled this a little bit. And, you know, one of the characters is going through the process of coming out. And it starts with just telling random strangers and then some an adult that you know, but that's not directly connected to you. Um, and it's it, the whole idea is to kind of work your way up to talking to your parents. And... It was just handled really, really sweetly, and the answer, now this obviously wasn't specifically about being trans, it was about being gay, but they're, they kind of come hand in hand, so, um, not that being trans means being gay, but you know what I mean, they're very similar experiences, just one's a little bit scarier considering the legal ramifications right now. So, just take your time and do what feels right. There really isn't a wrong answer unless, you know, you make the mistake like I did and not tell people before you tell the rest of the world. Okay. 
<clears throat> Question number two. What is coming out in Bill? <laughs> so coming out entails, and the reason I said before, you're going to do this a lot. Coming out enta really entails just telling someone, hey, I'm trans, and this is this is potentially my name, my name pronouns, um, just in general how I identify. And that's a lot, it seems like a pretty simple conversation, but it's going to be something that you do a lot. And so it almost probably will help to write out a script for yourself, so that way you just, you kind of get through it real quick, and then you're able to answer questions if people have questions. The reason I say you're going to do this a lot is especially if you're not doing like a full transition initially or even starting transition right away, it means you're not going to look any different. No one's going to just know suddenly that you're trans. It just, it's just not how it works unless you walk around wearing a t-shirt that says, hi, I'm trans, which I mean, a lot of us kind of do, but that's a different, co a different topic. It's just... It's a step-by-step -step process of just, you have a conversation with someone, you, they maybe ask some questions or they're like, okay, cool. Or maybe they're just like, uh -huh. which, you know, <laughs> that's your ticket to run um, if you can. And you go from, you go about your day. It's, you know, it doesn't have to be a big production every time. Now, if you are someone that wants to, like, after you've told like the most important people and done it in intimate way and let the, the people that really matter to you know and then you want to do like a big to do like help make a YouTube video like go all the hell out I think that would be wonderful especially time it with an actual coming out day that would be amazing we'd love to see it but that you do you at the end of the day so what actually entails with coming out is really just it's conversation and how many times you choose to have that conversation is up to you. Maybe, maybe one of the ways to do it is you make a video that just, you have essentially that conversation with yourself and then you just send it to people. That could be fun. Plus it, you know, takes some of the awkwardness out, but they still get to see your face. Your call. I don't think Lindsay liked those ideas. <laughs> when is the right time to come out? to your kids, to yourself, to your family, and to work. This was submitted last week. Um, we threw some additional stuff on the end that wasn't covered. When is the right time to come out is kind of the general question. And with the different categories, whether it is spouse slash significant other, children, uh, other family members that you're not, you know, married to, as well as your work. They're all a little bit different because they also involve different types of people. Coming out to your spouse is a topic that we're gonna address in a little bit. Um, and we're actually gonna do a whole separate deep dive specifically into coming out to your spouse, um, both from my perspective, as well as my spouse's perspective. You're gonna see Lindsay on camera here. Coming out to your kids really depends on the age. Now, I know that the people watching this video are a wide age range. Um, I have friends that are significantly older than me. Coming out for them to their kids was is gonna be a completely different experience than me coming out to my children and people that are, you know, 10, 15 years younger than me coming out to their children if they have. So it's a very specific process. The most important thing is that you be prepared to explain what being trans is at a level your children can understand. So if they are very young, there are different books that will help kind of explain this without even getting into the concept of what gender is. Um, there's an excellent story about um, crayons where there's a, one of the crayons is, I believe, a blue crayon, but he insists that he, or they, I should say, because I, I don't know if they gender the crayons, but what the crayon is a blue crayon and insists that they are a red crayon, I believe is the story. Or maybe it's the other way around. Doesn't matter. One color insists they're another, and 
even when they color they, you know it's it's a whole it's a very cute story but it's very kid friendly it's been a couple of years since i've read it um but we'll link it in the description below so you can get an idea of that's a great book for younger kids for kids that are a little bit older there are also some other books that we'll link in the description below that'll help them understand the trans experience without again getting any into any sort of the complexities that is gender politics and all of that because that's not what this is about um this when you're trans this is not a sex thing we don't need to talk about sex in the sense of sexual intercourse that's not what we're discussing here we are talking about your gender and how you present to the world this has nothing to do with what you do in the bedroom so that's why it's perfectly acceptable to explain this to your children because they're going to see they're going to be around you all the time so they need to know what's going on in terms that they can understand so we'll, we'll include some uh books uh in the description below for that as well teenagers and up like basically once the kids kind of know what's going on they understand the difference between boys and girls and all of that jazz you just treat them like adults in, in that stage um really just talk to them matter of factly they'll be kind of going to about it a little bit but you know they'll get over it because they're kids um especially teenagers they're just like you know five minutes later they're gonna be on tiktok and not even give a shit so don't don't stress more than i think you know some kids may take it hard but that's a whole separate topic really um and really adult children well they're adults now and you should talk to them like adults and they should be able to handle it because if they love you as a parent now, what your gender is really shouldn't matter because and even whether you stop being dad and become mom or not, it they're adults. They can handle it like adults. Now, coming out to other family members, that's a whole separate ball of wax now, isn't it? Um, like I said, I made the mistake of not coming out to my dad properly, but in the sense I ended up having to do a second coming out and you know, we just, for me, I just sent a text message that said, um, dad, um, I've decided I, I can't live as a cis man anymore. I am going to transition. This is my name. These are my pronouns. There's that. Oh, by the way, I've started HRT. Um, because I'd already kind of had that conversation with them. So there wasn't really a lot to discuss. Um, and at the end of the day, by that point, I was 36 years old. Kind of ultimately none of their business. Doesn't really affect them. Other than, you know, like they see me, but that just means call me something else. But you have to be prepared for that to go very long. I've been very fortunate in that my parents have been very supportive. The rest of my family is not, quite frankly. Um, my relationship with my sister is very strained. Not because she doesn't support me, but because I think there are elements of her in her life outside of my parents that aren't super supportive. I don't know exactly what. We haven't really discussed it. But it's led to the fact that I probably won't be involved or even attend her wedding this summer. My grandmother, who is the only living grandparent I have refuses to call me by my now legal name or address my pronouns and has not spoken to me directly since I've come out. She's only, I mean, she continues to send me a birthday card and a Christmas card, but that's about it. Like when she's here visiting my parents, um, she wants to see my, my daughter, but she doesn't want to see me. And she kind of heard through the grapevine, but I know that that's not the issue. Um, she's a devout Catholic and doesn't believe in gay rights. So I knew how that conversation was going to go and I just didn't bother having it. And so you kind of have to prepare yourself for conversations to go very poorly. And deciding when to have that conversation is, it's more of a, like, Maybe don't just surprise everybody at Thanksgiving. That's not going to go well. Um, it's the kind of thing that really should be done individually if possible with at least with the people that you 
you care about their reaction. For the people that you don't, you know, whether it's Facebook or whatever, just tell them and just get it out of the way. Because if they're going to react poorly, just get it out of the way. So you can just move on. Now, coming out of work is, it really depends on what you do, quite frankly. Um, I've had a lot of conversations with different trans women and trans men Coming out at work is a very complicated process that we can't really cover in the short time frame that we have. But what I can tell you is that you should be able to look through your, your company's HR documentation and see kind of if there's a process or not. Um, and really to know kind of in general what the policies are when it comes to gender transition. If your company does have a, a solid HR department, talking to them at first is the right call. Um, they'll walk you through the steps that you need to take and that way you're not navigating this process alone. You'll also be able to, you know, for, if, as long as you've worked there for a while, you probably got a good vibe of how people are going to react in general and what the best way is to approach, whether it's, you know, close coworkers, your boss, maybe your boss's boss. Um, I did go through this once um, during my first transition where I direct, went directly to my, not my direct report, but above him because he was one of the director levels. And I spoke with him first and I told him I've made the decision to uh, begin transitioning. Um, you know, it, but it, the difference for me was that it wasn't going to happen right away. I was just kind of getting him ready for this. He asked if he could then share this with other members of the staff at the director level so that they could all be prepared and aware. And they were all fantastic. It's one of the few like really great things about that working for that company I really still appreciate. All of the, the high level staff were incredible, but in a lot of cases, that's not true. And so you just have to be prepared, including honestly, if you're going to come out at work, you might want to have a backup plan as to finding a new job. Because if you don't, if you suspect that things are not going to go well, um, it is unfortunately still legal in most of the United States to be fired for being trans. And it, that situation is getting worse. So be prepared for what you may need to do. Um, and that's really all I, I feel comfortable saying because there, every situation is different. Trust your gut, but like know the ins and outs of the, the process for your job as well, because you may need new documentation. So if you want them to recognize you in a legal sense, um, like change your pay stuff, like you'll have to have gone through all of that. And, you know, just coming out is you probably not done that. So be prepared that you may still be repeatedly dead naked as an option. And if you're going to be okay with that, then you'll have to be okay with it. Now, a lot of companies are, are better about this, but not all of them. So be prepared. Now's the time where we switch chairs. I'm going to uh, go off camera and ask Lindsay some questions. And Lindsay's going to share her side of the story. Okay, Lindsay. Question <laughs> number four. What was your re initial reaction to being told Alexis was trans? Okay, uh, when Alexis and I started dating, dating back, <laughs> and she was, you know, not Alexis, uh, she explained to me that she was trans before. She tried it, didn't like it very much moved on past that. So I knew that that happened. I wasn't blindsided like some spouses are that you see sometimes in support groups or you hear horror stories from spouses where their husband or wife tells them this and they had no idea that it was happening. So I wanted to present that first. <laughs> Then, um, she was going through a lot and 
I don't want to get into specifics, but there was like a whole like wave of things that took place before definitively I'm trans. And we'll save that for the other video that we're going to do. But it didn't just come out as I'm trans. Like there was this whole like process and we'll discuss that later. But she had told me that she was trans and that she wanted to transition. And immediately I go into full panic mode. I'm thinking, what am I going to tell the kids? Do I really want to be married to a woman? Do I have to call her my wife? Do I have to use her name? Do I have to use these new pronouns? Do I have to tell my, how am I going to tell my parents? How am I going to tell other people? What's going to happen at work? Um, I'm a teacher. It's plain and simple. And as we all know how the education system goes and the laws here in Florida with the lovely don't say gay law, that wasn't an issue at the time, but now it is. It, it was frightening. I didn't know what to do. I just had to sit there and listen to this. And then she was going to the doctor to discuss HRT, just to, to find out some information. And she comes home and I remember I was still virtual teaching. This was during the COVID shutdown. And I was sitting at the then dining room table, which was my pseudo office slash classroom. And she comes in and says that she got a prescription. And I remember wanting to throw up. And obviously, if you know her and you know myself now, that's a completely different situation. I'm speaking about stuff that took place, what, like two years ago? Like two, uh, maybe a little bit longer than that, like with that whole process that we're going to talk about next time. Uh, so I'm thinking like, okay, you were just supposed to go and get some information. Like, why are you walking out with a prescription? Because prior to this whole thing happening in her first transition, she told me that she was uh, going to go on HRT on to the doctor, she started the process, but because, I don't know, she had some kind of misunderstanding between what was supposed to happen and what actually happened, she thought she was going to go to the doctor and get the prescription right then and there that first time she went. But that wasn't the case. They wanted to do blood work and then all the pre-op stuff that they ask you, the questions, kind of figuring out what's going on. And she then panicked and then didn't want to do it. It just seemed like too much, which is understandable when you think you're going to go in and come out with medication that you're ready to use at the time. And then you're told, no, you have to wait. So anyway, I thought that it was going to be more of a thing. Like she's going to go, she's going to get information. She's going to come home and share said information. I could also talk to the doctor. We could figure out, and I know this is going to sound awful because I know now that this isn't true, but at the time I thought, is this going to be okay? Like, are there going to be like side effects? Is this safe? Just, I didn't know any of this stuff. So I'm here panicking. <laughs> she didn't actually fill the prescription. She just had it. And she told me that I could let her know when I was comfortable with it. And then she would go and do it, fill the prescription. And I don't remember how many days went by or if it was the next day or I, I don't remember. Maybe but a couple days. Maybe a couple days. For me, I have to process things. You can't present me with a huge thing 
and then they expect me to instantly be either okay with it, not okay with it, or decide something. That's just not how I personally operate. So I needed time. And she was generous with it, wasn't pushy with it. She knew it was a lot. And I thought about it and I thought, you know, I know now that she was very sad and very depressed and very dysphoric, which I didn't know what dysphoria was at the time, but I knew that there was something off with her. She had basically given up on even trying to look good for, from a male perspective. She had let her facial hair just go like, she shaved her head, like dressing frumpy, just did not care what she looked like. And because I had been with her for a few years at that point, I didn't really care. You know, I just kind of didn't really even notice it that much. And I feel terrible saying that out loud, but I really didn't. But if I look back at pictures of her at the time, as her former self, you can see it written all over her face. It's, it's bad. I knew that I didn't want her to continue to be a man and feel that way. I knew that I didn't want her to get to a point where hurting herself was an option. I knew that I loved her. I loved this person. And I didn't want that to stop. So I decided, you know what? Let's just do it. I love you for you. And she explained to me over the course of those days, I think, and even maybe before that, that she, or he at the time, wasn't going to change personalities. She wasn't going to. I don't know why I thought these things were going to happen. I mean, they sound irrational when you say them. To be fair, I didn't. Okay. Um, so, you know, these things sound crazy when you say them out loud now that I have been in this for nearly two years. But I didn't know, uh, is, the, is she very different from he? Like, does she like all of these things that he never liked? Do, does, I don't know why I thought your personality is going to change completely and you're a different person. Like, like it's some kind of personality disorder. I don't know why I thought that. It was probably because I just didn't know and I was scared and panicky and, and didn't have the information. So I told her to go ahead and do it. I did get a chance to finally like speak with her doctor. We did like a virtual call thing and I got to talk to her and ask her questions. Like how does this affect her? Like how is this long-term going to affect function? <laughs> Um, cause she said from the beginning that she wasn't going to do the bottom surgery, that maybe a breast augmentation would happen in the future, but that was off limits. She just wasn't interested in that. But I wanted to know, like, if you're taking female hormone and you're pushing down the male hormone, does that still work? I didn't know this. I mean, like, who does if you don't ask questions or know these things because you know someone or you're in the mix of a spouse transitioning and you haven't spoken to a doctor about it. So she explained that, you know, everything should be good. That, you know, she explained what happens with the HRT. I was also terrified of her taking progesterone. I myself, as a cis woman, <laughs> at that time of the, the month, 
um, get that surge of, uh, we'll call it pee. <laughs> and uh, I become a crazy person. not person. call it pee? Okay, I'm sorry. Bog, maybe? <laughs> pee just sounds weird. And shush! Why do you? You get your... <laughs> stop talking! Just stop talking! Okay, I myself, as a cis woman who has her special time of the month, get a surge of that stuff and uh, become a crazy person. I'm sorry, the older that I get, the more crazy I get. It's a problem, and I have spoken to my doctor about it, and I'm trying to figure that out. But yeah, I mean, I will cry at the drop of a dime. I will yell and scream at anyone who looks at me funny. I will have borderline anxiety attacks for no reason. I will cry for no reason. I will just be sitting in my car or sitting on the couch and we're watching TV and it's not something that's sad and I just start bawling. So I'm thinking that this sort of behavior is going to happen with her. And I'm like, oh, hell no, because there's only so much crazy that I can take and it's coming from me. So I don't know that I can uh, deal with somebody else having that same kind of issue. So. Yeah, I was terrified that that was going to happen. She has since then started taking it. And I told her, you become a crazy person. I'm done with that. Like, And she assured me that if she was having some kind of crazy reaction to it, that she would stop taking it. And ever since then, everything's been pretty good. I mean... She does have her, her special time, as trans women do, and she does get overly emotional. I don't want to say crazy. I'm not going to say that. I would only say that about myself. But yeah, it isn't as bad as I thought it would be. It's not nearly as bad as it is with myself. So I'm okay with that. But yeah, I mean, this is all a lot of information that comes from the person that you're in love with, the person that you've decided to share your life with, the parents, co-parents of your kids with you, if you have some. It's a big deal. It's hard. I still struggle with it sometimes. I mean, not really personally with her, but like dealing with outside people. I mean, like I said, I, I'm a teacher in a pretty conservative county, and I can't talk about her. I can't talk about our family and things that we do. I have to, if I'm going to do that, I have to refer to her as my husband, and I have to use her dead name. I don't like doing that. It makes me very uncomfortable. It feels wrong, but it's the only way that I can talk to anyone about our lives so that is a struggle in itself but and I'm still kind of dealing with that but overall she is a much happier person a much better person when she was a man she had a lot of anger issues bad anger issues we got into some nasty fights. Nothing physical. I don't want it to sound like that was happening, but there was a lot of yelling and screaming and things exchanged that weren't nice. But um, that stuff is pretty much ceased. I mean, yeah, we do argue, but it's not at that level anymore. It's much, much better. She's a better mom to her kids. I mean, I don't want to say she was a bad dad, because she wasn't a bad dad. She wasn't like, you know, not paying attention to the kids, not doing anything for them, all of that stuff. But she's a much better parent to them now, more of a mom. 
she sees more of the the mom side of the coin when it comes to being a parent. So that is refreshing. I think that our two older girls benefit from that a lot. Um, even our younger daughter gets, you know, more momming from, you know, not just me, but also from her as well. And, uh, and overall, it's a better experience. It's a better relationship for everyone. There are still struggles. Everyone has struggles. We still all have moments where things aren't great. But it's, it's manageable now. Before, it was a powder keg ready to explode. And the sad part is, is I didn't see that. I saw some of it. Yeah, we had some fights. But... I never saw the forest for the trees while this was going on. Like I couldn't tell that she was feeling bad about herself, that she was having those dysphoric feelings about being in the wrong body and struggling with her appearance. I didn't see any of that. I didn't know that that was going on. And that hurt, that still hurts me that I didn't know that. But I don't know how you would know that if your spouse doesn't share that with you. So, I mean, you're not a mind reader. You're married to the person, but you're not a mind reader. So you can't really tell what inner dialogue they have going on. So anyway, overall, much better situation than before. And I did also want to address a uh, question that I got on NGL when I was still doing it. Someone asked me about giving advice to their spouse for that person transitioning. So I, I did a little highlight. I'm not going to get too into detail because we're going to make a whole other video about it. But I said that this is going to be hard and that you need to be kind to yourself. I know Alexa said that all the time, that you need to be kind to yourself. You do. If someone comes out to you, and especially if you're married to them, and they tell you that they are trans and that they need to transition or they want to socially transition or they want to medically transition as well, all hearing all of that information is really hard. I mean, I even had the... the this is so dumb. I don't even know why I thought this. She changed her name legally recently. And I was really upset internally, not because she changed her name, because I mean, we've been calling her by her name for a long time, but for whatever reason in my head, I thought we weren't married anymore. That our marriage license was like null and void because it had her old name on it and that wasn't her anymore. And that really hurt. But I mean, that's not true. I since have spoken to her about it and she explained that just because she changed her name doesn't break any legal contracts that you have in the past and that a marriage is basically a legal document and that it is still uh, current. All right. Um, I also said in this question that if you truly love your partner, it doesn't matter what gender they are. And I, I truly believe that. And I think about that a lot when my cis friends post about their husbands and they say, oh, this is the love of my life. And oh my God, I love them so much. And I can't imagine my life without them. And then I think, well, what if your husband wasn't really your husband and said that they were now your wife? What would you do? Would you still continue to love them because you love that person? Or are you just not down for that and you're out? And in my heart, if you really love somebody, it doesn't really matter if they were a boy and now they're a girl. As long as you and them have had this discussion and you both 
are on the same page and you're both in love with each other, it doesn't really matter. For me, I probably love her more than I ever loved him, to be honest. And I really loved him. Um, let me see, what else did I say? I also said, it's okay to feel, whether it's sad, mad, scared, or betrayed. Now, I was sad, scared, and mad. I wouldn't say that I felt betrayed. But I know that a lot of other spouses whose husbands or wives come out to them with this do feel that way because they are blindsided by it and didn't see it coming. That the person kept it to themselves and never said a word and now they're dumping it on their spouse and that person feels betrayed. I get that. In my experience, that's not what happened to me. I did feel sad and scared and mad, frankly, but um, it's okay to feel those things. It's okay if you feel betrayed, if you're in a different situation and you feel that way. Now, are you gonna get past it and work it out or is it something that you just can't get over? That's what you have to decide for yourself. And then last, no, no not lastly, Take time that you need to process. So if you need a day, you need two days, you need a week, you need a little bit longer than that, take that time because this is a big decision. Are you going to stick out the storm and go through this with them or are you going to bail? And you kind of have to decide that. I would say I would want to decide that relatively quickly. I wouldn't want to dwell on that for years and then just get bitter and mad and end up in a nasty divorce. So for me, I would take the time that I would need, which in our, I think our case was a matter of like a couple of days. Um, but again, I wasn't completely blindsided by all of this and we'll get into that in another video. And then lastly, I said, everything will be okay. So whether you decide that staying with your spouse is the choice to make or if leaving your spouse or parting ways is the best choice for you, then it's going to be okay. Whether you decide to be with them or not, either way, you are going to be okay. They will most likely be okay. You might even be happier if you're together and Separating is the better choice because it's just not going to work. You don't want to stay together and fight all the time. That's no fun. I've been there and done that, and you don't want to do that. Not with the left fist that my eyes have been. That was a lot. Um, and we are going to cover this more in depth, even though Lindsay did more than I thought she would, in another a separate video. But... With that in mind, I hope this was helpful. Next week, we will be discussing a topic that Lindsay did bring up a couple of times, dysphoria. So questions you have about dysphoria, what is it? How do you deal with it? That sort of thing. Drop them in the comments below. We are only taking comments uh, or questions from the comments moving forward, as we mentioned last episode, but I just want to remind you. So, Thank you so very much for watching. I really hope this was helpful. If it was, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. It's what helps us grow. It's what helps us help more people. So thank you again. We will see you on the next one. And of course, as always, have courage and be kind, especially to yourself.